Buckle in, sports fans. You're listening to The William Haynes Show. The program will be starting in just a couple of minutes, so grab your popcorn and get ready to enjoy the show. While you're waiting, make sure you're following us on social media at WHBC Stream and staying tuned to WHBCStream.com. We're so glad to have you today on the program and we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line on Twitter or call the show 352-639-0036. And thanks again for tuning in. HBC. Well, it is a good evening to you and how you be. William Haynes here, you there, here on this Tuesday night at 10.02 with 38 seconds to go along with it. Finally, yes, it is finally time to break down a Rays victory. They snap a five-game losing streak tonight at home to the Boston Red Sox. We've got a lot in this game to talk about. Austin Meadows. 2020 debut he had a couple of hits including a triple uh the bullpen was a little shaky at the end and it was nick anderson coming on for his save of the year charlie morton as well getting his first win of this 2020 season looks like he's finally getting into a groove went five and two thirds of just an earned run and i want to take this opportunity to tell you that you can call the show at 352-639-0036 at whbc stream is the Twitter. We have a, a chat feature built into Spreaker.com. Maybe just we'll do an expedited one-hour program taking you until 11 o'clock, but we'd love to hear from, from you and your race thoughts. Any sports thoughts that you have on your mind, we have on the monitors the Rangers and Hurricanes of the NHL um, in their playoff series, Game 3, the Rangers with their back against the wall. And also for baseball, the Marlins playing their first game in about a week. They're up 3 nothing in Camden Yards. We have a little bit to talk about there. Although it was a delay before the game, it is a relatively light news day today. So we'll hit that after we break down tonight's Rays win. Again, the number 352-639-0036. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Every 20 minutes, we do a sports break. We'll start with, uh, let's start with the baseball. We'll do that first at 1020. Take a short break and then we'll come back. So... Without further ado, I had some a couple of pregame notes. Looking at the lineup, Kevin Cash decided to go lefty heavy with the lineup against the right-handed pitcher and former Ray, Nathan Avaldi, who got the start for Boston. Tonight, out of the nine hitters, obviously seven of them were lefties, including taking out a couple of regulars. They took uh, the shortstop, Willie Damas, the righty bat out of the game, insert the left-handed bat of Joey Wendell, who also played pretty good defensively at shortstop. I think that's something that they can continue to use against right-handed starting pitchers. And it was Mike Zanino getting a day off at catcher in favor of the lefty bat, Michael Perez, who did not have a hit, but did score a run on a hit by pitch. So he, I guess you can say he produced a little bit offensively. It was kind of scary. He got hit on the, uh, on the elbow guard. So thankfully that was there because he was rolling around on the ground in some pain. Uh, G-Man Choi was batting cleanup. He went 0 for 3 tonight, uh, but did have a sack fly. Did also strike out. He's batting just under 150 right now. Manny Margot is placed on the bereavement list after the loss of his father. 
Uh, Margot had known that his father was sick for some time, but I, I think he just found out of his father's passing. So everyone here at the William Haynes Show and WHBC Stream uh, sending thoughts and prayers out to Manuel Margot and his family uh, during a tough time, and that must be never easy uh, to lose, uh, especially your father. So hopefully he's doing okay. He'll probably be out for a little while. So they the Rays put him on the bereavement list, and they call up Ryan O'Grady, a player that they acquired from the St. Louis Cardinals in the offseason. He's a first baseman and corner outfield type, a lefty bat. So a guy that maybe they'll, I don't know if they'll use him at first base, but a guy that can maybe fill in uh, Margot's place in the corner outfields. But now with Austin Meadows' return, you have your two corners in Meadows and Renfro's. But maybe we'll see Ryan O'Grady a little bit. I'm surprised they didn't call up Daniel Robertson, but I guess it makes sense needing to bring up a guy who can play the outfield. And obviously, this is the first game home since the 0-5 road trip in the race, thankfully getting back in the win column. They have now improved to 5-6. and six. They're 5-1 and one at home so far. So I think that'll be the formula moving forward. If you didn't listen to my show last night, I would definitely re- recommend that you do that. It's on, on Spreaker.com. You can just go and listen to yesterday's edition of the William Haynes Show, my monologue. I basically admitted the struggles, but I think... It's too early to panic. This homestand could really prove to be a difference maker getting Austin Meadows back. Uh, a tough first road trip, their first road games in about four months. Um, so you get back in the Dome. They've already taken game one of this two game set against the Red Sox, and they looked pretty good. And then you have four games in three days against the New York Yankees at home. So if you can catch them at the right time, I think the Rays can really get this ship turned around. Obviously, they're only one game under 500 and the top two teams in the American League East are guaranteed a playoff spot so it's definitely too soon to start um, freaking out about the race and I think this week they are going to get things turned around also some other notes that I had it was the home plate umpire who was umping his first major league game it was Randy Rosenberg so I suppose congratulations to him but he did have some shaky calls about a handful of calls that probably could have gone the other way but relatively looked okay at, at home plate And obviously, Austin Meadows in his first start of the season uh, activated off the COVID list. And it was Trevor Richards being optioned to the site in Port Charlotte, which I thought was a little surprising because he was a guy, obviously, that they acquired in a trade last season from the Marlins. A guy that could maybe start outright if you needed him to, but more of a bulk inning uh, behind an opener type. And he's looked a little shaky, so they sent him to Port Charlotte. But you're you're down a pitcher, obviously. They didn't call anyone up yet, so... Um, You have uh, Ryan O'Grady and Meadows coming up and you're sending down Richards and not sending him down, but putting Margot on the bereavement list for now. And I think that's all I had for the pregame. So we go to the top of the first inning. It was a one, two, three inning. Morton's pitches were a little bit kind of all over the place. The off speed stuff. He's still trying to find it. The fastball is still low nineties at about 93, 94, but the Rays confident that he'll be able to find his velocity as the season goes on. I'm trying to look, he got Devers uh, to strike out on a 94 mile an hour rising fastball. So that looked good. And then we head to the bottom of the first and it was a one, two, three inning for the top of the Rays order and Meadows first at bat of the year. He works a three, two count and strikes out. Uh, of all the started working him with the fastballs inside, which Meadows took. And then when he started going outside with the fastballs, uh, tricked Meadows up a little bit. Uh, Meadows ended up finishing tonight two for four. He had a triple, came across to score a run, also knocked in a run, struck out twice. So good for him. <laughs> After his first game, he's batting 500. Uh, so that looks good in the stat sheet as I'm looking at the at the scorecard. As we go to the top of the second inning, it was a solo home run for Mitch Moreland that made it one nothing Boston. And I'm looking there; he gave up another single, uh, struck a couple of guys out, but that was that was just about it. Wendell made a nice play at shortstop again, as I mentioned. He's he's looked pretty good over there defensively, and I think he's only played two games at short. He's a guy that's done it. Not so much last year because he was injured, but in 2018, a guy that could give Adamas some off days. And I think how aggressive Cash has been lefty, uh, lefty-righty lefty matchups, I, I haven't really noticed that he did it this much in the past couple of years. I think the shortened season, he just wants to get the most favorable matchup possible. So I think against right-handed starters, I think they really need to look at making the lefty bat of Wendell a permanent fixture at shortstop. He's great defensively. He was three for four tonight. He's batting 357 on the year or 379 on base percentage. So he's a great piece in the lineup and also good defensively. So I'm hoping that Cash will give more looks at shortstop. Wendell taking advantage 
of the opportunities that he's been given so far. And I'm going to give you the, the, the number to call in one more time. We have a line open. We'd love to hear from you. It is 352-639-0036 as we continue to break down tonight's 5-1 to one raise a victory. We head to the bottom of the second inning. It was a Joy Wendell triple with two outs. So they had the tying run 90 feet away. And it was a Hunter Renfro strikeout who went one for four tonight. Um, and that one strikeout. So you're thinking then it's the same old stuff from Renfro. Can't hit with runners in scoring position. Comes to mind an opening day. He left the bases loaded on a strikeout looking. So kind of more the same from him, but uh, he ended up coming through later in the game. Top of the third, it was Peraza getting a leadoff single. And this is this was an interesting play. J.D. Martinez with a ground rule double. It ended up bouncing into the um, Crawford cutout. And Peraza would have easily come around to score if it had stayed in play. But, of course, the ground rule double, the runner has to stay at third base. So it was runners at second and third with two outs. So Morton could end up getting out of it. And he does getting uh, Xander Bogarts to pop out. And I wanted to mention how good Ray's pitching was today, at least in this aspect. Xander Bogarts, a guy who was batting over 300 going into tonight's game, had been red hot for Boston. Again, he was 0 for 4 tonight with a couple of strikeouts. Um, so they shut him down. He batted cleanup tonight, so definitely been able to shut him down. Also, the Rangers and Hurricanes have just started their third period tied at one. Igor Shosturkin getting the first start of the series after Henrik Lundqvist had lost the first two games. So we'll keep our eyes on that. We also have the Marlins and Orioles, the first game for the Marlins in about a week. And we head to the bottom of the third. It was uh, Kevin Kiermaier striking out and Michael Perez in a 3-2 count grounded out he started out 3-0 and then um, obviously ended up grinding out and then it was Austin Meadows with a two-out single his first hit of the year and it was Brandon Lau with a pop-up um could have been a bloop single but it was a nice play by Jackie Bradley Jr. in center field running over to get it It was a diving play it was originally ruled a hit and if it was it would have been Meadow coming around to score and it would have been a tie game they review it and it was overturned Jackie Bradley did make a, a head first diving catch a really impressive play, a highlight reel, no doubt, and it saved a run. So at the end of three, it was one nothing Boston. Uh, the race offense had been uh, more the same as far as not being able to hit with runners in scoring position and so on and so forth. Of course, that changed a little bit as the game went on. Go to the top of the fourth. It was a quick 1-2-3 inning for Morton. Got, Mor- uh, got Moreland, Vasquez, and Verdugo to ground out. Uh, bottom of the fourth, this is where the Rays got on the board. It was Yandy Diaz flying out to start it, then a G-Man choice strikeout, and of course the two-out rally Rays. It was Yoshi Satsugo working a walk, which was the first issued by Evaldi, and I believe, yes, that was his only walk issued. Um, I think he'd only issued a walk in his other two starts, so three starts, three walks. Uh, that's certainly a good way uh, to pitch for the former Ray, Nathan Evaldi. And then with Yoshi at first and two outs, it was Joey Wendell singling. So then you had runners at first and second. Two outs, um, uh, Hunter Renfro hit a foul ball into one of the catwalk rings. Um, and it was originally, well, the, the Red Sox thought that it was a foul ball. And uh, Hunter Renfro, I don't think, knew the rule. And he, he ran out to first. So there's some confusion. I just mentioned that because I'm sure there's going to be some salty Red Sox fans that are going to be complaining that, you know, just like the Yankees do, we're, we're stadium in baseball, so on and so forth, uh, get, you know, get a real stadium, it's hitting the the catwalks, and it, it is a little irritating when it happens, but I think it's part of the quirkiness of the Trop. Of course, you probably feel that way if you're a race fan, not uh, a fan of an opposing team playing in Tropicana Field, but it's just part of the race experience, and um, I, th- I thought that was worth mentioning. And then also in that very same at-bat, it was a two-run go-ahead double. I'm not sure if this was the play or not, but the, the Red Sox had a couple of plays in the outfield going off their glove. Jackie Bradley Jr. had a chance at that Wendell triple and couldn't get it in the glove. And I believe that two-run go-ahead double for Renfro, or I think that was the one in the gap. There was one later in the game that was off the glove, I think, of Verdugo, and we'll point that out. So uh, the Red Sox not necessarily plus defensively. They made that that nice run-saving catch from uh, Jackie Bradley Jr., but some other miscues as the game went on. So after that two-run double and Kevin Kiermeyer flew out to end the inning, the Rays had a 2-1 to lead at the end of four, top of the fifth, 
Uh, Morton getting his first lead of the season. He goes, uh, gets the Red Sox out in order. One, two, three. Was a Jackie Bradley Jr. fly out, uh, a Peraza fly out, and got uh, Benatendi to strike out. Bottom of the fifth, the Rays added on another couple of runs. It was Michael Perez getting it started with a hit by pitch, hit the elbow guard. He was rolling around on the ground. So thankfully for the guard, um, he was. I guess he was fine. He was able to. Uh, run the bases, and he he played out the rest of the game, so I think he's going to be all right. And then it was an RBI triple for Austin Meadows. That was the one that was off the glove of Verdugo, so that made it three to one race. And then with a obviously Meadows at third and no outs, it was an RBI single from Brandon Lau that made a four to one race. Yanni Diaz grounds it to a double play, and Choi flew out to end the inning. So Choi, as I mentioned in the cleanup cleanup spot, he was zero for three. Uh, but did have a sack fly, so uh, not exactly what you want. I think they should. Um, I honestly would have Sutsugo Yoshi in the cleanup spot right now. Yanni Diaz, a guy who can hit for power, but it's really struggling. His average is just 176, so uh, they're gonna have to mess with that cleanup spot. Certainly, I don't think Renfro is ready for that right now either at 189, but it did have a nice clutch hit tonight. So Kevin Cash, I'm sure, will continue. Uh, to play with the lineups so at the end of five it was four to one Rays, and obviously if you watch the game you know the final score didn't change much after that although it did get interesting in the ninth inning we go to the top of the sixth it was Devers striking out and then it was a JD Martinez double off the wall Bogart strikes out they take out Morton uh, insert Aaron Loop so that was the end of the day for Charlie Morton, he gets the win. Uh, goes five and two thirds, gives up an earned run on five hits, doesn't walk anybody, strikes out five, and just gave up that solo home run. Uh, to Moreland was the only run against him. Through ninety three pitches, sixty five were for strikes. His ERA is at five fifty two, so not great, uh, but hasn't gotten a lot of run support. So uh, good for Morton getting the first win of the season. He's now at one and one, and then it was Aaron Loop coming in to get the final out, which he does. So it was a double, and that's it. Morton exits. Bottom of the sixth, the Sox go to the bullpen to start the inning of all these day. was done after five, gave up four runs on six hits, walked a man, and struck out six. Through only 85 pitches, he took the loss tonight. He's now 1-1. One and one. Uh, He's looked pretty good this season for Boston, but thankfully the Rays were able to get to him a little bit as the game wore on. Um, and then the the Rays put a couple on in the six, but couldn't bring anyone around. I'm looking, it was another single for Joey Wendell. He was three for three at that point. Stole a base, uh, stole a base to get into second. Run for a fly out. It was a Kevin Kiermaier walk. So it was first and second with two outs, and then they take out um, the reliever and put in a different one, and it was Michael Press striking out to end the inning. We now go to the top of the seventh. It was Aaron Loop who got the final out in the six, stays in. For the entire seventh, faces the six, seven, eight hitters, goes one, two, three. It was a pinch hit for Pilar, uh, but he strikes out. And for Aaron Loop, he retired three righties in a row. Aaron Loop, a lefty pitcher. So a guy, obviously, um, with matchups, that, that helps with a three batter minimum. Obviously, you can't just bring in a guy to get out a lefty. So if Aaron Loop, I know it's the bottom of the order, but if he can prove to get out righties, I think he could be a nice bullpen piece. He's 31 years old, so a veteran in the bullpen, no doubt. Uh, we go to the bottom of the seventh. It was a couple of hits and another run for the Rays. Austin Meadows struck out looking, and then it was a single for Brandon Lau, and Yanni Diaz had a slow rolling single that got through the infields, and Lau got all the way to third. So runners at the corners with only one out. It was the G-Man Choi sack fly, which was his one RBI that made it 5-1 to one Rays. And Yoshi Sitsugo struck out to end the inning. We still have a couple more innings to talk about. We're going to go to a 2020 sports break, and we'll be right back to break down the final couple innings of tonight's Rays 5-1 to win. The number to call is 352-639-0036. At WHBC Stream is the Twitter. We're going to give you some baseball scores first, and after that, we'll be back after a short break. HBC. Some games already gone final in the MLB. The Rays with a 5-1 win over the Red Sox. Also, the Indians 4-2 over the Reds. The Twins this afternoon got a 7-3 win over the Pirates. Also, final, it was the Braves 10-1 over the Blue Jays. 
and games currently still in action and the rain delay in the eighth. It's the Nationals up five to three on the Mets in the sixth. It's the White Sox and Brewers tied at two in the bottom of the seventh. It's the Cubs four Royals two. Also in the bottom of the seventh, it is the Marlins up three nothing over the Orioles in the sixth. It's the seven and two Rockies up four to two on the Giants in Coors Field in the fourth. It's the Astros up three nothing on the Diamondbacks. In the fifth, it is the Rangers and Athletics tied, no score. Also in the fifth, it is the Padres up 2-0 on the Dodgers. Uh, the Padres beat L.A. last night. Hey, sports fans. William's currently in the can, but he'll be right back. We're currently on a commercial break, so don't touch that dial. Remember, you can call us at 352-639-0036 or drop us a line on Twitter at WHBC Stream to tell us what's on your mind. We want to talk sports. We want to get unruly. We want you to tell us what you think so we can argue. Anyway, when all that's said and done, please stay tuned for William's World Famous Around the XFL podcast and other projects that he's currently got in the works. Please visit WHBCStream.com And thanks again for listening in. HBC and at 10:22 we are back on the William Hain show breaking down tonight's Rays victory also during the break the Hurricanes scored a one a, um, a goal on the Rangers to make it 2 to 1 of course the Rangers are facing an em- elimination here in the third period about 14 minutes left in the game and the Hurricanes also on a power play so a chance to double their lead if they can cash in on the power play also on the monitor we have the Padres up 2 nothing on the Dodgers the Padres won last night, so if they can take this series in San Diego, they can really cement themselves as first place in the NL West. But the the Rockies, to their credit, have been really good at as well, overachieving at seven and two. So I think that's definitely an interesting division to follow, and we might, we'll maybe talk about that a little later on the show. Remember, you can call the show. We have a line open at three five two six three nine zero zero three six. You can also tweet us at WHBC Stream. We're probably going to go about another 40 minutes, taking you up until 11 o'clock. I will preview tomorrow's Rays game, uh, the second game of the two-game set against the Red Sox, and get up on out of here. Uh, the, the Hurricanes have just about a minute left in the power play. We'll see if the Rangers can kill it. There was just a shot that went wide. <laughs> it's like trying to get back into the Rays breakdown, and the Hurricanes could put this game away and take a series, a sweep over the Rangers. I guess I can bring this up now before we go to the hockey. It is really amazing how well the the Rangers dominated Carolina in the regular season. I believe they took the season series three games to none in real dominant fashion. Uh, of course, the, the the Rangers, who were red hot when the NHL went on a break, they have not looked good when they came back. They've had trouble scoring. I think they were 0 for 7 on the power play in game one, and I've not given uh, Lundqvist any support in here. Um with Igor Shesterkin, he's given up a couple of goals. And it looks like the Rangers are going to kill this power play. So with about 12 minutes left, the Rangers down a goal. Uh, we'll keep our eyes on that and let you know what transpires. Uh, definitely an, an important series as far as the Eastern Conference lines up. And as we return back to the Rays breakdown, in the top of the eighth inning, it was Fairbanks coming in to replace Loop. He got in a little bit of a trouble. He got Peraza to fly out and then Ben Attendee reached first on a Yoshi Satsugo error at third base. He had it right in the glove and it went through. That's that's the, really the thing of playing Yoshi at third base or really anywhere in the field. He has not looked great, at least throwing from left field. He's a good bat. I mean, uh, has not looked good statistically. He had a home run 
on opening day. I'm trying to find his average. He's only batting 182. He was 0 for 3 tonight and did score a run off of a walk, struck out twice. Um, so if his bat is cold and he's not playing the field well, uh, he may be out of the lineup, but it's too soon to, to talk like that. Uh, but he did have that error to put on Benatendi. So it was a runner up first with one out. It was Rafael Devers trying to bunt against the shift, but it's a foul ball. Works a 3 2 count and ends up walking. So it's men at first and second with one out. Remember, this is Peter Fairbanks. On the mound, it was J.D. Martinez striking out in three pitches. I think it was three straight sliders uh, to get J.D. to wave and miss. And then Bogarts in a 3-2 count strikes out. So a couple of men on with only one out. Fairbanks gets in some trouble but gets out of it without allowing a run. The bottom of the eighth, the Rays go down 1-2-3 for the first time since the first inning. With that 5-1 to one lead, we go to the top of the ninth. And it was Fairbanks coming out, Ryan Thompson in. It was a non-safe situation, of course, in a four-run game. It was Michael Chavis grounding out to short. Another nice play defensively by Joey Wendell at shortstop for the first out. And then it was Vasquez on an 0-2 count getting a single. So one on, one out. Kevin Pillar singles. So it's men at first and second there with one out. Jackie Bradley Jr. reaches base on an infield single. It was a weird play, I believe, for Wendell at short. And he couldn't get the throw in time. So that loads the bases with only one out. A grand slam would tie up the game. So Kevin Cash comes at, comes to the mount to take out Ryan Thompson and put in Nick Anderson, who they're, obviously the Rays were hoping to save, I guess, for tomorrow's game. But they're going to be getting another off down Thursday, so it's not too big a deal. And Anderson, trying to see his pitch count, he only threw 11 pitches, so he could probably go tomorrow as he did not, or there was an off day yesterday. So he'd be good to go for tomorrow. Uh, So he comes in with bases loaded and one out, gets Peraza to strike out, and then Ben Attendi strikes out looking to end the game. So they had a chance there, bases loaded, one out, uh, a grand slam, as I said, would have tied it, but the Rays close out a 5-1 victory. Again, it was Charlie Morton with the win, Nick Anderson the save, Nate Eovaldi the loss, the Rays offense. It's too early to say that it's clicking, but Austin Meadows uh, contributing so early in his return, going two for four tonight with a triple. Did strike out twice, but did work some good at bats. He was surprisingly patient for a guy that was coming back in his first game. There was some talk uh, among the, you know the people on the radio and podcasts and whatnot to talk about the Rays. There was some concern that maybe Austin Meadows would be pressing in his return, and he did not do that. Obviously, he was patient at the plate. Um. And it paid off for him. So I think that's going to be an important part of the race success moving forward as not having a good leadoff hitter has very much hurt the race offense here in the early goings. Um, the Rangers had a chance, I think, with the goalie down several shots on net. I'm trying to see the replay. I didn't even see if that was a goal or not. I, I think that, yeah, I think the uh, the Hurricanes ended up saving that play. Um I don't know why they, they can't put the, the scoreboard. Yeah, the, the shot was offline, so with 10 minutes left, the Rangers are still down a goal. They're facing elimination here in the first round of the playoffs. But back to the race, I think uh, they, they messed with G-Man Choi leading off, Brandon Lau, Yandy Diaz. None of those guys have been effective in the leadoff spot. They don't work good at-bats. They it usually takes those guys a couple of at-bats to get into the game. That is not the case with Austin Meadows. I think he worked a, a full count. Uh, in the first at bat of the game, so that really helps as far as keeping the starting pitcher from uh, working into kind of a groove, keep him off off balance. And I think Austin Meadows, if he can play every day, will be a, a huge addition to this race team. Now they were talking a little bit. I was listening to the radio broadcast uh, during the game, and they were talking about uh, Meadows t- dealing with COVID. His wife had it first. And then uh, Austin got it, and he was dealing with um, not severe symptoms, but he said it was kind of bad for a couple of days. Um, and the Hurricanes just scored another goal on Shesterkin, so it's now 3-1 to one, as they're probably going to put this series away in three games. Um, I, I keep losing my track every time I look onto the monitor. I don't know why I can't even find uh, my train of thought. We, yeah, we're talking about Austin Meadows and the COVID. Um he dealt with some pretty bad symptoms, he was saying. But, of course, he was, he worked outside in Charlotte Sports Park um, with the alternate site for the race, and he did play in some steam, simulated games. So I think if he's okay playing in the Florida Heat outside, I think he'll be back um, in good shape. He looked to be just fine tonight, legging out a triple. 
So it looks like the same old Austin Meadows of 2019, a guy that was um, really the, probably the Rays' best player, at least uh, position player-wise. Um, with it, oh, a day off on Thursday, I think that'll be good for Meadows because I was thinking maybe do give him an off day tomorrow. Um, but I think you put him in the lineup. I'm trying to see the starter for the Red Sox tomorrow will be Martin Perez, and he's a lefty thrower. So I think you still put Meadows uh, in the leadoff spot unless you really feel convicted about putting the righty Diaz there. But Yanni Diaz has has not really found his bat quite yet. He takes a bunch of pitches, which I guess is good for a guy leading off. His on-base percentage is 350. So maybe you do go with him against the lefty Perez. Uh, but I think we'll see Meadows at the top of the lineup. I don't think you put him at cleanup, maybe at the two or three slot, if not leading off, uh, maybe at left field, or if you want to DH him. But I think Meadows is just fine in the field. I don't think he needs that break just yet, especially with the off day on Thursday. And that's about all we have for the Rays. We may dabble uh, into them with the next, uh, the back half of the show. <clears throat> Remember, the number two call the show is 352. 352- Six three nine zero zero three six at WHBC stream is the Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Again, it was a light news day today. A uh, news coming out of Major League Baseball. It was the Marlins tonight resuming play for the first time since the twenty sixth, I believe. Is that right? I'm trying to see. Um, yeah, that would have been last last Sunday. So that was their first time playing as they got the full week off dealing with COVID. They had twenty one. Uh, personnel testing positive, and they had to they had to send them all home. They bust them all the way back to Miami from Philadelphia, as that's where the first series was played. And they had to bring up a bunch of guys. I'm not sure how they pieced a roster together. And they're up three nothing in Camden Yards, a team that just swept the race. So who knows what the Marlins are up to this year, Derek Jeter and company? But they're back. I'm kind of amazed that base uh, Major League Baseball is able to pull this off with having over half their traveling party test positive and somehow they didn't infect the other half and they were able to keep it going. I'm really surprised. I was kind of thinking they were just going to cut the Marlins out. Uh, But that's good news for the Cardinals who uh, had their series against the Tigers canceled after their Brewers series got canceled. But they, the Cardinals look like they'll be back expected on Friday in St. Louis for a weekend series with the Cubs who lead the NL Central right now so maybe if they could follow the marlins um plan not 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 in the front end of getting the covid but but on the back end of being able to navigate through it they'll be back playing and of course they're going to try and make up some of these games with the seven inning double headers but the uh, major league baseball is not committed uh, to every team playing 60 games they're going to seed playoffs by winning percentage if every team does not get to 60 and there's no way the marlins do they may be able to get in 55 or so Uh, The seven inning double headers certainly help. Uh, Another news item, the Cleveland Indians manager, Terry Francona, his return to the team is unknown. He's been dealing with some gastrointestinal issues. He had some testing done today. Terry Francona, the 61-year-old manager, uh, he's going to be missing some time. And again, they don't know when he's going to come back. Uh, An Indians team that I believe, I want to make sure uh, I'm not wrong on that. I believe they did get a win tonight they did a 4-2 to two win over the Reds it was Shane Bieber getting the win Shane Bieber now 3-0 and on the year with an 0-83 ERA similar I think like the exact same stat was for Sonny Gray so I think you may have your AL and NL Cy Young Award uh, front runners as of right now with those stats 3-0 and in a under one ERA so obviously that's what's going to help the Indians uh, their lineup is good they scored four runs today in the starting pitching uh, Brad Hand who was the All-Star Game MVP last year. has been a little shaky, but picked up his third save for Cleveland as they advance uh, to 6-6, six and six, get back to 500. Again, just under eight minutes to play uh, in the Rangers and Hurricanes game. Carolina's up 3-1, and one, so it looks like the Rangers, after an exciting finish to the regular season, are going to get swept. That's really sad. It was a team I was looking forward to uh, in the postseason. I spent a little bit of time watching them just because they had gotten so red hot. Uh, back in March when the NHL was <clears throat> still going on. Igor Shosturkin in goal looked absolutely amazing. He's given up three goals tonight. So it looks like it's they're going to send the, the Rangers home packing. So uh, we'll give some more attention to the Lightning, of course. They've been just been playing round-robin games. They won a shootout, I think, 3-2 to two 
uh, over the Capitals to get their first win in that round robin. So that was a good sign, of course, you know, getting everyone healthy. I believe they got half Stamkos back, but, if, you know, of course, Vasilevsky and Hedman and Kucherov. I could go on and on. The, the Lightning, a loaded team. I'm, pro- I'm sure probably the favorite to come out of the East, but you know how they do in the playoffs. Maybe this year can be different with ooh, maybe not so much pressure playing in front of the home crowd that expects that they're going to win. I wouldn't be surprised if the Lightning find a way to to bring home the cup back to Tampa Bay, but we'll have to see on that. They're just going to play some more round-robin games until these qualifying round series can settle themselves. Another news item as we have about another five minutes towards uh, another sports break. It is um, the Major League Baseball announced. I think the owners still have to approve it, but that must be the MLB PA that just approved it. Uh, the rosters this year were supposed to, uh, the way it was supposed to go was they would start with a 30 player roster after two weeks you cut it down to 28 players and two weeks after that you cut it down to 26 so the the cut to 28 is going to be this Thursday now they have just ratified that plan and it will stay at 28 through the regular season and through the postseason uh, so no different with the playoff rosters they're just going to keep it 20 with 28 all the way through the end of October instead of cutting down to 26 it makes sense with the COVID stuff if you have guys testing positive that you have to send down it makes sense to have more players there's no reason to to cut it down to 26 in a weird year like this and the three-man taxi squad has been um uh, I'm trying to think of the word it's now five it's it's grown to five uh, taxi squad is basically players that aren't active, but they're basically in the stadium when you go on the road. Um, so like, for example, like Daniel Robertson could be on the taxi squad for the Rays. Let's say when they were on the road in Baltimore, if one of the, like say Joy Wendell had to go on the injury list, you already have Daniel Robertson there in Baltimore that you can call up, uh, that the next day and, and he can play. So that's the taxi squad and that's grown from three to five. So, uh, helping alleviate some of the, the stuff that's been going on with COVID. So I think that was good on the MLB to get that worked out. Of course, something they talked about, they've, they've done a, a bunch of stuff since the season started. Uh, when we look back at when these two sides, the MLB and the MLB PA, that is, was looking to get this season up and going. They had been talking about expanded playoffs, seven inning double headers, um, more expanded rosters. And those were all things that were shot down. And, of course, this season gets up and going, and all those things ended up working their way into the official plan. So this year, of course, there will be expanded playoffs. They did uh, ratify seven-inning doubleheaders. The Rays are going to have one of those on Saturday against the Yankees uh, because of some weird scheduling stuff. And also the expanded rosters, they have altered that a little bit. So good, good on MLB for being flexible and trying to navigate this season the best that they can a couple minutes until the break so i guess we can talk a little bit of hockey the playoff series that are going on right now just the round robins and the qualifying round so games that went final today also a game that was played last night after we went off the air was the oilers winning over the blackhawks to tie that series at one game a piece uh, games that went final today was the Flames 6-2 to two over the Jets. So they have taken the driver's seat in that series two games to one. We had predicted at uh, the William Haynes show that the Jets would win that series, but their uh, their backs are now against the wall. The Maple Leafs win 3 nothing over the Blue Jackets to tie that series. The Predators win 4-2 to two over the Coyotes to tie that series. So those series are both uh, tied at one game apiece. And it was the New York Islanders winning 4-2 to two over the Florida Panthers and the Islanders have now taken a two games to none series lead, uh, and they now have the Panthers facing elimination. And of course, in the third period, it is the Hurricanes up three to one over the Rangers with just under six minutes to go. So yeah, it looks like unfortunately the Rangers season is going to be coming to an end. I was looking forward to maybe covering them a little bit on maybe a magical playoff run. They had everything really except the defense going in, but the goaltending from Shesterkin was so superb. You think he could, as he did in the regular season, kind of bail out the defense. I thought the offense was going to score a bunch of goals. Of course, Artemi Panarin, a great offseason acquisition. You had Mika Zibanejad. He scored five goals in a game, and he's been a a great uh, center. And you have um, guys like Chris Kreider, who they just signed to an extension. I mean, they had pieces on pieces on top of pieces as far as, as quality players. Capo Kako, the rookie, the number two overall pick, has really come on strong in this series. So that's a bright spot for them moving forward. 
Uh, but just disappointing with just five minutes left down a couple of goals. I mean, maybe they can pull something off, but I, I doubt it. It looks like it'll be the Hurricanes advancing. And the Hurricanes, they did some damage in the playoffs last year. They got all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. They lost to the Bruins, but they did beat the Capitals. Uh, I think they, they beat, what was it, the Blue Jackets? Uh, I mean, they were they were good in the playoffs last year. I'm not sure about how, how well the, the team is constructed this year, but of course, showing up the Rangers like this, uh, they may be just as good again this year, so... I guess they could be an interesting team to follow. And we are now at 1040. We're going to take a 2020 sports break and be right back. We're going to give you all the scores on the basketball. Remember, you can call the show. We would love to hear from you at 352-639-0036. At WHBC Stream is the Twitter. We'll be right back. HBC. Just one NBA game still currently in action. It's the Trailblazers 63-59 over the Rockets in the third quarter. Uh, scores that went final it was the Nets in a 19-point upset, 119 to 116 over the Bucks. The, the Nets were plus 19 going into it, the biggest upset since the 90s in the NBA. In the overtime, it was the Mavericks 114 to 110 over the Sacramento Kings. Uh, the Suns won 117 to 115 over the Clippers. Is the Pacers 120, the Magic 109, and the Heat 112 to 106 over the Celtics. Hey, sports fans! Williams currently in the can, but he'll be right back. We're currently on a commercial break, so don't touch that dial. Remember, you can call us at 352 639 0036. Or drop us a line on Twitter at WHBC Stream to tell us what's on your mind. We want to talk sports. We want to get unruly. We want you to tell us what you think so we can argue. Anyway, when all that's said and done, please stay tuned for Williams' world famous Around the XFL podcast and other projects that he's currently got in the works. Please visit WHBCStream.com. And thanks again for listening in. HBC and at 10:43 we are back on the William Haynes show. Just about 15 minutes left in the program, taking you up until 11 o'clock. On the monitor here it was the Dodgers. I believe Cody Bellinger tying this game at two. It is two to two in San Diego. A game that we'll keep our eye on. Again, the Hurricanes up three to one on the Rangers with three and a half minutes left in the third period. It looks like the Hurricanes are going to close out this series. We'll We'll be on the air by the time this game wraps. To give you the final score, uh, we'd love to talk some Rays or whatever kind of sports thoughts you have. We have a line open at 352-639-0036. At WHBC Stream is the Twitter, and, and there is a chat feature built into the stream on Spreaker.com where you were listening to this. We'd love to hear your sports thoughts. So the Rays winning 5-1. to one. Over the Red Sox, a little early to say they've gotten off the schneid. Uh, the offense has looking, looked a lot better tonight. Austin Meadows in the leadoff spot is going to transform this lineup. Uh, I have no doubt in that. Um, look, I, I wanted to pull up the, the score from tonight, if I still have it, to see the averages on guys. Brandon Lau, he was 2 for 4 tonight. He's now batting 308. He's been a bright spot in this lineup on base nearly 40% of the time. Yanni Diaz, a guy that struggled, he picked up a hit finally tonight. He's batting 176. He has walked a ton. Uh, a guy that spent a couple of extra rounds in batting practice yesterday, they were saying on the broadcast, trying to get his swing straightened out. Uh, I guess he's not happy with where it's at as of right now. He's not looked great at the plate. I don't know why pitchers are still walking him. 
Um, he didn't walk tonight, but just the fact that, I mean, scouting report, he pitched to Yandy Diaz right now. Hopefully he'll start to clobber those for doubles off the wall and home runs. He's great at the 110 mile an hour off the bat line drive as the Rangers down two with two minutes left to have gone empty net. Shesterk into the bench uh, to get an extra attacker on, and it looks like they're going to have a chance for a shot on goal, and it's no good as a... Um, uh, we'll keep our eye on that. Wendell, who's been a bright spot, three for four tonight. He is three fifty-seven on the year. Uh, as I said, I would definitely play him at shortstop against right-handed uh, starting pitching, especially <clears throat> the way uh, Willie Damas has been struggling, not only defensively, but um, well, I guess he's been pretty good on offense. Um, but just have maybe I, I can't say platoon because Willie Damas is your franchise shortstop. Um, but I think get Wendell some more chances as he looked good defensively. Wendell, a guy that could play across the defense, a more athletic, uh, I guess, addition of Ben Zobers. He can play, he can play second, shortstop, third, and a little bit of the corner outfields. So I'd love to see him get more at bats. Renfro, who finally had a clutch hit tonight, a two RBI, I believe it was a double. He's batting just 189 on the year and has struggled a little bit in clutch moments, but maybe uh, tonight was a sign of more things to come. Kevin Kiermeyer was 0 for 3 tonight, did work a walk. He's batting just 182. Obviously, we know from the struggles defensively, the struggles running the bases, and all of that. Uh, Kiermeyer, a guy that struggled on both sides, both offensively and defensively, so hopefully they're just going to try and get him through that back to the other side. Michael Perez, who uh, he's only had four plate appearances going into tonight's game I think he started one game and then came in defensively as a replacement in a couple of others. As they show Henrik Lundqvist uh, looking sad on the bench. Um, he started 129 straight postseason games. Uh, that streak was broken tonight when they put in Shesterk. And so, I mean, <laughs> it's just a sad, sad night for the Rangers because they didn't get the win anyway. It would have been a little exciting if Shesterk and could have kept the Rangers alive, but it was ultimately their offense that should have been much better than this in this series. Uh, that's really to blame as we do the poor, poor uh, post-mortem, I suppose, of the New York Rangers. But I think maybe getting them some playoff experience, they'll be back and ready to go as a nice diving save for the Hurricanes goalie. That could have made things interesting if they could have gotten that through. Uh, but it's still 3-1 to one Hurricanes with just about a minute and a half to go. We talked about Yoshi uh, already, a guy that's not looked great in the field, had an error tonight and has struggled a little bit at the plate, just batting 182. He had that home run on opening day, but that's been about it. Not a lot of extra base hits. He's worked some walks, singled. He worked a walk tonight. And then from Choi, we know from all that, I guess we'll go ahead now, although we do have about uh, 15 minutes left in the program, the number 352-639-0036. It is Martin Perez for the Red Sox. Going up against Ryan Yarbrough of the Rays. It'll be the Rays at 5-6. and six, The Red Sox at 3-8. and eight. Yarbrough is 0-1 on the year with a 154 ERA. And just about 12 innings pitched. And Martin Perez is 1-1 one one on the year with about a 506 ERA. And about 10 innings pitched. We look to Perez's last start. It came at the Mets. A game that the... Uh, Red Sox won four to two. He went five and two thirds, gave up two earned runs on two hits, walked four, struck out five. So you think maybe a guy that the Rays could potentially get to tomorrow? And then we look at Ryan Yarbrough's last start that came on Thursday, last Thursday, the thirtieth at Atlanta. He went six and a third, uh, gave up two earned runs on two hits, walked three, and struck out six. Um, so. A decent start for him. I think he's been a bright spot in this rotation. Uh, I feel confident about him tomorrow. Uh, a Red Sox lineup that has power. But uh, Ryan Yarbrough um, uh, comes to mind his first start of the year against the Blue Jays. That's a lineup that certainly can hit with power. And Yarbrough uh, shut them down through about the five innings as the Hurricanes tacked on an empty net goal. So that game looks to be uh, over at 4-1 to one with 30 seconds to go so uh the hurricanes move on in a sweep three games to none they take that series uh and that, i believe that's the only playoff game going on right now for the hockey i think there'll be one coming on after we we go off the air in about 10 minutes so with martin perez being a um he's a left-handed pitcher 
So as I look for a leadoff, I would like to see Meadows in the leadoff spot. Uh, but knowing Cash with the left down righty, I would expect to see Yandy Diaz probably lead off to, uh, just to get that righty on lefty in advantage. And I'm trying to figure out the lineup on where you go um, with a lefty. I would say um, it would be Yandy Diaz at first base. I'm trying to think of other righties that they have. Uh, Adamus will obviously be at short. I think you still go with Brandon Lau at second and then at third base. Uh, take your pick. Probably they'll put Yoshi at third, and then the outfield. They obviously go Meadows, Kiermaier, and uh, Renfro uh, to get that lefty on righty advantage. And then catching, I would probably go Mike Zanino or Kevin Smith, a guy that I know they've been wanting to get at bats a lefty or well a lefty. I forget. So it'll be Zanino probably catching tomorrow. So not a bad lineup uh, for them tomorrow. That's my prediction. We'll see. That game is at 6.40 tomorrow night, so hopefully the Rays can get a win in advance to 500 and get a two-game sweep over the Red Sox as the uh, the Hurricanes-Rangers game just went final. Hurricanes win 4-1. to one. The Rangers' uh, heads are held low, but they go to mid-ice uh, to do the uh, the, the hand, hand bumps in the line. Disappointing uh, little postseason for the Rangers. Only played three games. It's amazing. I talked about it when we previewed uh, this NHL postseason in the weird uh, first round format with the five best of five qualifying rounds. I, I told you guys don't expect don't expect sweeps. These teams have had to come so far to get here, uh, going into the bubble and all the testing and you know training after being off for four months, and then you don't win a game. I mean, you lose. A series three games to none after you dominated that the Hurricanes team in the regular season. It is mind boggling to me the offense. I mean, I I didn't watch all the games, obviously. I mean, I'd be interested to see just why the offense was so bad. Maybe the Hurricanes just had a nice plan defensively, but they are eliminated. We'll get them off the monitor. I believe there is a hockey game that just went live and um yeah, the Wild and Canucks just went live, so we'll We'll pop that on the monitor. Remember, final about eight minutes left of the show. You can call us at 352-639-0036. We'd love to hear from you. We're probably going to talk a little bit of baseball in the in the six. It's the Padres and Dodgers tied at two. That's a game and really a series that we've been looking forward to uh, for a uh, battle for basically really first place in the National League West. I believe that's going to be a very entertaining division one that I was expect to get three, if not four, teams into the postseason, but that might be um, a little bit of a stretch. Um, we'll we'll see from there. Uh, MLB games still in action right now, still in a rain delay. It's the Nats five three over the Mets. It was um, I don't know why uh, Stephen Matz getting blown up in just about three innings. In the bottom of the eighth, it's the White Sox three to two over the Brewers. So I might have put the White Sox away a little too early. A win tonight. Would bring them up to seven and four, so so maybe they can get things turned around in, in a weird American League Central. In the top of the ninth, it's the Cubs five two over the Royals. If the Cubs win tonight, they advance to nine and two. Uh, so there's some teams that have gotten off to red hot red hot starts. Also in the bottom of the ninth, down to their final out, it is the uh, Orioles who are losing four nothing to the Marlins. So the Marlins, after being off for an entire week, are going to go and pitch a shutout. In Camden Yards, uh, probably will get that four nothing win. In the eighth, it is the Rockies five to two over the Giants. So if the Rockies, who wow, Herman Marquez, the guy that we talked about last night, he's gone seven innings so far, just two earned runs on five hits, no walks, eight strikeouts. So uh, he's definitely their ace this year. A win would advance them to eight and two. Uh, in the fifth, it's the Astros up eight to one on the Diamondbacks, so they're they're going to end up getting that win. And that'll bring the Astros to six and four. The Diamondbacks will drop to three and eight, so I think it's time to put away Arizona in the National League West. In the sixth, it's the Rangers three zero or yeah, or I'm sorry, one nothing over the Athletics. I don't think the Rangers are going to be able to do anything, but uh, the Athletics just in a weak American League West, and the first two teams making it. I'm sure the A's. Will find their way into the postseason. Uh, also in the second, it's the Angels three nothing over the Mariners. I think both of those teams are going to be left 
for dead. Honestly, I don't have much to talk about uh, left. It was a really light news day. Um, the basketball has been going on, but not not a whole lot of action there. Just with uh, the way that the season is formatted, just um, really a couple of weeks of regular season games to seed it out. But uh, pretty much all the playoff spots are locked up. It's just now about the order and with no home court advantage. It really doesn't matter where it's seated anyway. So not really a whole lot to talk about there. Uh, we talked about the Rays, a 5-1 to one win in, in impressive fashion over the Red Sox. Uh, the Rays with just one game now under 500 as they look to get things turned around after a really rough road trip and went in which they went 0-5. So as I said, you got the Red Sox. Um, on you got the Red Sox tomorrow. Hopefully, you can get that sweep. I maybe said that if they can uh, have a 500 home stand, basically taking one of two from the, the Red Sox and two of four from the Yankees, that they'd be in good shape. But the way they look tonight, maybe they'll be able to sweep the Red Sox. Hopefully, get to Martin Perez. Um, not a big fan of where of how their lineup lines up against lefties. But I think they'll be able to figure it out. I don't love Yanni Diaz leading off, but my guess would be that's where Kevin Cash is going to go. And 40 seconds into the game, the Canucks have already put up a goal on the Wild. Minnesota leads that series one game to none. So maybe Vancouver will be able to get that series tied up in Edmonton in the in the West Conference bubble. Um, so yeah, it's Martin Perez v. Uh, Yarbrough tomorrow. And then the Rays get an off day on Thursday. The reason... For that, it was supposed to be four games in four days, traditional Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday series with the Yankees. Uh, but the Yankees are going to make up their series with the Phillies that they missed um, because the Phillies had to postpone play after uh, facing the Marlins in opening weekend. They had to quarantine. So um, the Yankees and Phillies game tonight was postponed. They're going to play a doubleheader tomorrow. Um, and then again on Thursday and then the Yankees make their way down they'll play a game on Friday it'll be Blake Snell v James Paxton a couple of lefties neither of them have looked really that sharp this season so uh, that'll probably be a high scoring affair I would imagine um Saturday it's a double header in the first game it's Tyler Glasnow v Garrett Cole so that's going to be must see TV in seven innings I wouldn't be surprised if both of those guys went complete game um, Glasnow's last start at the Orioles was a little concerning, I I will say. Um, so I don't know about that, but I'm sure Garrett Cole will probably <laughs> end up going seven inning complete game. Uh, no starters announced for the second game of that doubleheader. I think that will help alleviate pressure off the bullpen. Um, I haven't watched one yet because the Rays haven't had a doubleheader. This will be their first of the season. So I can't say that I'm in favor of the seven innings. I don't know what it'll be like to watch it. I mean, you're basically watching 14 innings. Because the, the both the games are back to back, so you're watching about 14 innings um, with the games 20 minutes apart. It would be cool as a viewer. I think the games, the strategy will be different. You go more aggressive, maybe, but you can also give your bullpen a break. I think the race having a couple of off days this week is really going to help them as well. Even if they sweep Boston and uh, start getting hot, I don't think the off day is really going to hurt them in that regard. And then on Sunday, it's Chirinos v J Hap. So I'm trying to find. Um, that would probably be pushed up to the second game of Saturday, unless I'm. I think they've they've got it mixed up. So uh, with the off day, I think you could go Morton. Yeah, you would. It would be Morton v whoever um, of the Yankees, but I, I I believe it would be Chirinos and Jay Happ in the second game of the Saturday doubleheader. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, the Yankees, a team. I mean, they've looked red hot. They're eight and one, first place in the American League East. Honestly, one game's too early to tell. We'll talk tomorrow after that second Red Sox game. But, I mean, would you really be surprised if in Tropicana Field, the Rays take 3 or 4 from the Yanks? Maybe that doubleheader gets a little weird at the Trop. You know, it's always weird when the Yankees come to town. Something always weird happens with the catwalk or something weird uh, really always happens. So, uh, the Rays four games back of first place. The Yankees off tonight. They'll play two tomorrow. Um, hopefully the Phillies can um, sweep the doubleheader. That would be nice because that would put the Yankees at eight and three. Hopefully a Rays win six and six. So then um, ah, I'm <laughs> trying to do the math um, on the fly is a little tough. But I mean, you take three or four and you can really make that. Um, you can close the gap. It's really not about winning the American League East this year. I guess it would help even without fans. The way it's going to work is the top seed. Um, 
in the first round of the playoffs. It's a three-game series, and all three games are at the top seed stadium. So it would help to win the division, but second place is all you're going to need. And it's the Orioles right now at second place at 5-3. and three. Obviously, they're not going to be able to keep that up. Um, so I think uh, the Rays will talk tomorrow. Hopefully, they can keep it up against the Red Sox. Remember, it's Martin Perez against Yarbrough. Battle of a couple lefties. I like probably Yarbrough's chances of going deep into this game. Maybe give him six, maybe seven strong. I'd love to see that. The bullpen I'm not in love with. I will probably see Diego Castillo, maybe Jose Alvarado tomorrow. Nick Anderson, I'm sure, will be good to go. So you have the, the back end of the pen, uh, maybe. So I uh, wanted to thank everyone who tuned into the show. Uh, it just went about an hour. I know it was a light news day. I was just trying to fill an hour, maybe get some calls in there. But that's all right. We'll be on the air tomorrow right after the Rays game. And we will see you then. HBC. No.